good day students today we'll be discussing about analog butterworth filter approximation so why do we go for analog butter filter approximation so we have seen in the previous video in frequency selective filter that in order to realize a digital ir filter first you need to construct an analog filter right and then a map that analog filter using transformation techniques into a digital IR filter. So, during the design of this analog filter design, it is very much essential that you have to design the filter in such a manner, it becomes close to the characteristics of an ideal filter. It definitely cannot be equal to, but you have to try to bring the characteristics equal to that of an ideal filter. In this particular process, different people proposed different approximation techniques right so those approximation techniques primarily are given by butterworth filter and chebyshev filter approximation techniques in today's class we will be seeing about butterworth filter approximation technique so what will be the overview of this uh, butterworth filter that will be discussed today is first we will be seeing about the frequency response and the characteristics of a low pass butterworth filter right then we will be studying about the how to determine the poles of the butterworth filter these poles are very much essential regarding to the stability of the filter third we'll be studying about the butterworth polynomials which are needed to realize the transfer function of the filter so these three are the major design perspectives of a butterworth filter so based on these three uh, knowledge that is gained we will be designing a low pass butterworth filter design a complete flow so now let us start with the magnitude frequency response characteristics of a low pass butterworth filter so in previous uh, video itself we have seen about uh, the practical frequency characteristics of a uh, uh, low pass filter in general so this particular frequency response is for specifically for butterworth filter right it is you can see that there are two frequency response over here so first we'll be discussing about the, this frequency response both are same but it represented in different notations so here this is frequency response has a numerical gain and it is given by ha of j omega so the maximum gain that is possible is said to be 1 right so here the pass band edge frequency is given by omega p right so and uh, this pass band frequency is given by omega p we know very well that epsilon is called as a ripple in pass band and a lambda is called as a ripple in stop band so at the pass band frequency of omega p you will be having an attenuation value or gain value of 1 divided by square root of 1 plus epsilon square similarly at the stop band frequency of omega s you will be having the gain factor of 1 divided by square root of 1 plus lambda square right so now uh, what is this response characteristics this response characteristics is equivalent of this the only thing is this magnitude response here is just a numerical value here it is represented in terms of decibels so here it is 20 log of ha of j omega and the gain given here is gain in decibels so when you take 20 log of 1 it will be equal to 0 right and here we do not represent by 1 by 1 plus epsilon square instead when we transform it into db we represent the attenuation uh, factor or the gain factor by means of alpha p where alpha p is nothing but attenuation in decibels right so at uh, maximum pass band attenuation at pass band frequency of omega p the attenuation will be equal to alpha p i hope it is clear similarly this alpha s is attenuation in db for stop band frequency so at omega equal to omega s this attenuation factor is said to be alpha s which is represented db so here i have represented a uh, two free equivalent frequency response characteristics because this will be very useful for you when you go into the problems 
so in certain problems they will give you a specification as a numerical number in certain problems they will give you a specification in terms of db so accordingly you have to choose the parameters right so uh, hence uh, finally we can tell here again that the magnitude frequency response ha of j omega is given by it is actually ha of j omega it is given by 1 divided by 1 plus omega by omega c to the power of 2 n which is whole taken to the power of square root n values equal to 1 2 so this is the frequency uh, representation equation for this particular butterworth filter so now going on what are the characteristics of the low pass butterworth filter right so before going on to the characteristics again we have presented a same uh, butterworth filter but here uh, the main thing is we have taken different n values so what is n n is called as order of the filter what is order of the filter order of the filter uh, denotes the complexity of the filter see actually here we are prototyping an analog filter where actually what in an analog filter order of the filter is determined by the rc stages if you have just one single rc stage the order of the filter is one when you have two rc stages the order of filter is two right so why do we go on uh, increasing the number of rc stages this graph is very much evident you can see here that this is for n equal to 2 right so for n equal to 2 you can see that the transition region is very wide right the transition band is very wide and this graph is almost uh, away from the ideal characteristics right so if i want to get more near the ideal characteristics i need to increase the order of the filter so for n equal to 4 you can see this curve the transition region is becoming a little bit smaller then again for n equal to 8 the transition region is still more becoming smaller so an important inference is as the order of the filter increases the transition region of will become smaller but before going into discussing that we will be uh, seeing all those and again we will be returning back to the dependency of the order of the filter right so here you can see that what you can determine here is ha the squared magnitude response right or even the magnitude response also you can take so the squared magnitude response or the magnitude response at omega equal to 0 so at omega equal to 0 what is the magnitude response it is equal to 1 right it is equal to 1 for all n whether n equal to 2 4 8 or whatever it is the value is equal to what 1 then omega is equal to 0 right second one the magnitude of the squared magnitude frequency response is equal to 0 0.5 for all n. see you can see that from this uh, plot that we have obtained here all these uh, characteristic curves merge here right this is a point omega c at omega c or the cutoff frequency the magnitude is equal to 1 by square root of 2 right so this is 1 by square root of 2 and here we have uh, taken squared magnitude so 1 by square root of 2 square will be what 1 by 2 which is nothing but 0.5 so for all n values at the cutoff frequency of omega c the squared magnitude will be equal to 0 0.5 or we can tell that the normal magnitude ha of j omega will be equal to 1 by root 2 so this is the second characteristics that we infer from a, a low pass butterworth filter thirdly so thirdly we can see that uh, suppose we take uh, see here it is just represented in term of magnitude right if we represent this magnitude in terms of decibels right 20 log of h of j omega at omega equal to omega c is called as when you calculate right you take 20 log of 0 0.707 you will be getting it as minus 3 db so this minus 3 db is occurs at cutoff frequency and that is why this omega c is called as 3 db cutoff frequency so this 1 by root 2 is the magnitude and if the same magnitude is represented in terms of decibels you will be getting it as minus 3 right so next characteristics very important characteristics 
एच ए ऑफ जे ओमेगा स्क्वायर और एच ए ऑफ जे ओमेगा इज अ मोनोटोनिकली डिक्रीजिंग फंक्शन ऑफ ओमेगा राइट वॉट इज मोनोटोनिकली डिक्रीजिंग फंक्शन ऑफ ओमेगा द मीनिंग इज देर आर नो रिपल्स देर इज यू कैन सी दैट देर इज नो रिपल्स आइदर इन द पास बैंड और इवन इन द स्टॉप बैंड दैट इज वाई यू आर टेलिंग दैट दैर इट इज देर इज अ मोनोटोनिकली डिक्रीजिंग और अ ग्रेजुअली डिक्रीजिंग फंक्शन फॉर ओमेगा this characteristics where this uh, filter is called as maximally flat filter because in pass band you observe that you almost have no ripples right so that is why we uh, tell it is called as maximally flat response so this maximally flat response how do you attain it using a butterworth filter you attain it only at the expense of this increased transition region in butterworth filter usually the transition region will be very wide only if you have a wide transition region it is possible for us to attain a maximally flat uh, pass band without ripples right but however if i want to increase see but uh, transition region if it becomes wider what happens the cut off uh, transition from pass band to stop band Uh, should be still more lesser right if you want to reach the ideal characteristic it is still more lesser so if you uh, if you try to do that and if you increase the order of the filter as you increase the order of the filter what you can do is transition region will become smaller but what will happen is the maximally flat region will start exhibiting some amount of ripples right so for an effective butterworth filter you have to maintain an optimal order of the filter where the ripple also will be a minimum and the transition region will also be under a acceptable range so h of a approaches to ideal response as the value of n increases so only as the order of the n increases it will attain the or it will reach that of uh, maximal uh, at of an ideal response but what is the disadvantage as you try to increase the order of the filter to a higher value there is a possibility that ripples can come in that particular filter so the choice of the filter whether it's going to be a butterworth or shebishev whatever it is ripple depends upon your specification see suppose that you you decide that uh, uh, ripple is not a factor i need more accurate response means yes you can go for increasing the order of the filter but if your requirement is that uh, it should be a maximally uh, flat uh, filter means and you can compromise with the sharp transition means then you can automatically go for a butterworth filter and this understanding will be still more clear for you when you go into shebishev filter right so having this characteristics of butterworth filter next we move on to the determination of poles of butterworth filter determining poles of butterworth filter is very very important because it determines the stability of the filter right so how do you determine the poles so we characterize the magnitude frequency response as this one so already we know that right this expression and then magnitude squared function frequency we are just squaring this and it is given like this where the thing happen when you square what happens is 1 by root 2 is removed then normalized magnitude square function what is called as normalized magnitude function it is nothing but the function at which omega c value is equal to 1 when the cut off frequency is equal to 1 we represent the transfer function as normalized transfer function and i am taking this by substituting omega c equal to 1 and we are just putting it as 1 by 1 plus omega to the power of 2n so omega c we know it is at the minus 3 db frequency or the cut off frequency and n is called as the order of the filter right so now first in this equation what you have to do is you have to substitute s is equal to j omega so you have j omega right so you have to substitute s is equal to j omega that is uh, see we know that uh, poles analysis can be done in s plane so h of j omega is in your uh, uh, fourier plane so you have to transform from this fourier plane or you have to move from this fourier region into s region so how do you do that we know that s is equal to j omega sigma plus j omega if sigma is taken as zero we can simply replace s by means of j omega so that is what we are doing so we are replacing s is equal to j omega where omega can be written as s by j 
So, when you substitute in this previous equation here, when you substitute here, you will be getting h of uh, s the whole squared equal to 1 divided by 1 plus we had here omega. So, in the place of omega, right, s by j to the power of 2n and you simplify here minus j, 1 by j is minus j to the power of 2n, s to the power of 2n. So, 1 divided by 1 plus j squared to the power of n, right, as s squared to the power of n. So, you will be getting 1 divided by 1 plus minus 1 to the power of n, s squared to the power of n. Now, this h of s whole square, we are splitting into h of s and h of minus s. Why this we are doing? Because in our s plane, you have left hand side of the s plane which is negative and the right hand side of the s plane which is going to be positive. So, we are splitting into h of s into h of minus s. So, when you split, you will be getting 1 divided by 1 plus minus s squared to the power of n. We are just writing this minus 1 to the power of n, s squared to the power of n you can just replace by minus s square to the power of n, right. So, now uh, this h of s, you will understand this, this uh, transfer function occurs on a circle of radius omega c at equally spaced points k equal to 1, 2 and n. You will understand this when we plot the poles, right. So, function has, when you try uh, this function h of s into h of minus s will have poles as I told you earlier, both in the left half as well as the right off of the s plane but what is the condition for stability for the condition of stability the pole should lie on the left hand side of the s plane hence even though we have four poles on the right hand side for designing the filter we will be considering only the poles that are present on the left hand side of the filter so we have to from the poles we have to form the polynomial so now proceeding on to this uh, continuation here, I have to find the poles, right? You would have studied in Laplace transform. Uh, when h of s is given equal to some value, how do you find the poles? You take the denominator and equate to 0. Same way over here. Take the, determine the roots of this equation by taking the denominator and equating it to 0. So, I am taking the denominator 1 plus square root of minus s square to the power of n is equal to 0. So, here we are going to split our analysis in two ways. One is we are going to take the order of filter n as odd and another one we are going to take the order of the filter n as even. So, when the order of the filter n is odd, you can take 1 plus minus s square to the power of n is equal to 0 which implies s to the power of 2n is equal to 1. So, s to the power of 2n, 1 can be written as e power j 2 pi. So, for k pole location, you can tell, right, sk. So, for one pole, look in general, I am telling s as this. So, the number of pole locations, we know it will depend upon the order of the filter. So, if I have k pole location, sk to the power of 2n will be equal to e power j 2 pi k. So, how many value of k you will be having? So, those many number of pole locations you will be having. So, sk will be equal to just uh, you can take here e power j 2 pi k divided by 2 n. So, this is equal to e power j pi k divided by n. So, sk value will be e power j pi k by n for n values odd and what will be k value equal to k equal to 1, 2 up to the value of 2 n. So, this is the case for which n is said to be odd, right. So, similarly, for n is even, take the same value 1 plus s to the power of 2n, right. So, what will happen when you take n as even? When you take a n as even, automatically this negative side will disappear. So, you will be getting 1 by s square to the power of n, which is nothing but 1 plus s to the power of 2n is equal to 0. So, automatically s to the power of 2n will be equal to minus 1 and when you take for k pole location, s k to the power of 2n will be equal to minus 1. So, 1 you can represent it as e power j 2 pi. So, how will you represent uh, minus 1? You can represent it as e power minus j pi, right? You can represent it as what? e power minus j 2 pi. You can represent it as 2 pi. So, here again you have 1 minus. So, that you can represent it as e power j into 2k minus 1 into pi. The value of k becomes equal to 1, 2 up to 2n. See, you can verify also minus 1 
can be written as e power j 2k minus 1 into pi. You substitute for various values of k, you will be uh, justifying that it can be represented. So, this is sk value for n which is even. So, to determine the number of, or to determine the pole location, uh, you uh, choose the equation depending upon whether n is odd or even, right. So, pole locations of Butterworth filter for omega c equal to 1 are called as what? Normalized poles, right. Uh, if you want unnormalized poles, what you have to do is every pole location you multiply it by omega c. So, you will be getting your unnormalized poles. So, x k dash will be equal to omega c into s k. The transfer function of such a filter, the transfer function of a such filter can be obtained by substituting s tends to s by omega c. So, now let us see poles for n equal to 3. See here uh, we have seen how we can uh, determine the poles. Now let us do it uh, uh, for an example. We will take an example. Uh, for an order of the filter n equal to 3, what will be the poles and how will you plot the poles, right? So how do you take for n equal to 3? What is the value of k? You write what is the value of k? k equal to 0, 1 and 2, right? Then now the value of n is 3 which is nothing but odd. So when n is 3 is odd means choose the pole equation for odd. So sk equal to e power j pi k by n for n odd. See k value do not get confused between this and this. This k value is for related to the poles. So for the poles k value will range from 1, 2 up to 2n. 1, 2 up to 2n, right. So now you substitute the value of k here, right. So I have taken here pole and then you know that e power j is nothing but the polar representation. The same pole can also be represented in a rectangular form also. So, for k equal to 1, it is S1, right. So, S1, when you substitute the value of k equal to 1, you will be getting e power j pi by 3, right. You try to represent this in polar form, you will be finding that you can try it, you will be getting the angle as, uh, the magnitude as 1 and the angle will be given as pi by 3, right. And the equivalent rectangular representation will be 0 0.5 plus j 0.866, right. Then similarly, you substitute for k equal to 2, s2 equal to e power j 2 pi by 3. So, you find again the magnitude will be 1 and the angle will be 2 pi divided by 3. The equivalent rectangular representation will be minus 0 0.5 plus j 0 0.866, right. Similarly, you find for S3, S4, S5, S6, right. In all these, you will be obtaining that, you will be seeing that the magnitude will be equal to 1, right. It is very uh, uh, interesting to see that the magnitude is equal to 1. Whereas, you can see that the angle is progressively increasing. Starting from pi by 3, it is returning to 2 pi, which is 360 degree. So, and uh, take a moment, take a pause and just observe the nature of these poles over here, right. So, uh, these poles you will have a better understanding when you plot it on the S plane, right. So, next what we are going to do is, we are going to plot, plot it on the S plane, right. So, let us proceed. The location of poles for Butterworth filter. So, we are taking S plane where x axis is real part of S and y axis is imaginary part of S, right. So, first pole, right, it was given by S1 in rectangular form first time plotting. So, 0 0.5, so you know how to plot, right, uh, approximately you can take this is 0 0.5 and j 0.866. So, you will be having S1 located at this point because real part is also positive, imaginary part is also positive. Second pole is minus 0.5 plus. So, it is real part is negative, imaginary part is positive. So, you will have here. Similarly, S3, what is the value of S3? Minus 1. So, it is a real part, actually S3 will lie on the axis, right? It is not above the axis. This pole will lie exactly on the axis. And then S4, S4 is uh, 0.5, right? And the minus J 0 0.866. Actually, here it should be uh, minus 0 0.5. 
it should be minus 0 0.45 minus j 0.86 then finally s5 is 0 0.5 minus j 0 0.86 and s6 is uh, s6 will be actually plus 1 right it should be actually plus 1 so since it is plus 1 it is lying on the positive axis you can see these location of poles right there are totally six poles right which i have represented in rectangular form now the same poles the same location can also be interpreted in polar form so the same pole what is this e power j pi by 3 so what is the meaning this radius is said to be 1 right the radius is said to be 1 and angle is pi by 3 that is with respect to the 0 degree the angle is taken as 60 degree so that is your s1 similarly s2 so s2 is radius is 1 angle is 2 pi by 3 so this is pi by 3 60, 60 degree 2 pi by 3 will be what 60 into 2 180 degree with respect to this reference axis of 0 so you are getting with this 0 you are getting this second plane in the same manner you can proceed on and mark each and every pole so third pole is one angle 180 degree the angle subtended from here will be what 180 degree right then s4 which is one angle 4 pi by 3 then fifth one which is one angle 5 pi by 3 and finally it is one angle 2 pi that means there is a complete rotation from 0 to 2 pi right so finally if you plot an envelope you will be getting an envelope like this so what we have seen is the location of the poles in an s plane which can be plotted either in a rectangular coordinate or as a polar coordinate now the important takeaway is for designing the butterworth filter should you use all the poles obviously no you should go only for the poles that are lying on the left hand side of the s plane because only the poles that are on the left hand side of the s plane will contribute to the stability of the system right so now uh, uh, taking this in mind so we have determined what are the poles and which poles you have to consider right so now <coughs> we have to uh, move on into the uh, next one denominator polynomial So we will continue with uh, how to find the denominator polynomial see to our ultimate aim is to find the transfer function of the filter right so transfer function will contain a numerator as well as the denominator so the denominator is uh, determined by the location of the poles right so with, since we have found out what are the poles we can automatically deduce what is the denominator polynomial right so the denominator polynomial can be found out as uh, we uh, we have taken the example for n equal to 3 so the, the poles are 0 0.5 plus j 0 0.86 and s2 s3 s4 s5 s6 so denominator polynomial is given as s plus 1 into s plus 0.5 the whole square plus 0 0.866 squared so you take a combination of all these poles so you'll be getting s plus 1 into s squared plus s plus 1 so we will be able to deduce that the denominator will be having the polynomial which is highlighted in uh, uh, yellow which is s plus 1 into s squared plus s plus 1 right so similarly you can find out that uh, the remaining for order of 1 and for order of 2 and then for order of 4 you will be getting the remaining a uh, denominator polynomials so uh, what is the low pass butterworth filter design so this will be the sequence of steps that will be following for uh, design of low pass filter so this low pass filter design we will be compare doing it in the next class so as for today's class uh, you just go on to a practice problem uh, determine the location of poles for butterworth filter of order 4 and hence determine the Butterworth polynomial for the same right so please do this practice problem you can uh, find the poles and from the poles you can automatically find out what are the uh, locations right thank you